Hello, and welcome to Via Satellite's Thursday Morning Conversation. My name is Rachel Jewett. I am Via Satellite's Managing Editor, and I'm hosting my first TMC today. Um, I will be helping Mark do some of the Thursday Morning Conversation TMCs with our 10 hottest companies, which we are thrilled to announce. I'm here today with Sarah Spangolo of Swarm, and it is just within the hour of Swarm having some satellites on SpaceX's rideshare launch this afternoon. How are you feeling about that, Sarah? Yeah, thank you for reminding me. I got to finish this interview, bike into the lab, and hopefully make the launch. So <laughs> it's going to be an action-packed day. Um, you know, we've launched multiple times, so um, it's always really exciting. But I guess some of the nerves uh, are uh, a little bit lower than they were for the first few launches. So I'm very confident that SpaceX will deliver us to orbit and all of our 28 satellites will turn on. We'll probably hear from them in a few hours. Um, and just hoping it's as smooth as the last few launches have gone. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so how many satellites are on this launch and what will that take Swarm's constellation to? Yep, so we have 28 satellites and it takes us from 92 to 120, which is a pretty uh, impressive number and almost all the way there to our goal of 150 by the end of this year. Awesome, well, yeah, this is super exciting. And congratulations on being named one of Via's 10 hottest companies. Um, we Thank are, you. You know, we're very excited to highlight some of the companies that we think are some of the most dynamic in the space sector. Um, so I wanna hear about your background and your story as one of Swarm's co-founders and kind of the story of how the company got started. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I uh, grew up in Canada, was always interested in space and aerospace, thought I would be an astronaut when I grew up and got an opportunity to go to space camp that really inspired me when I was in grade eight to consider that. And then that led me to study mechanical engineering and then um, went to Michigan to study um, aerospace engineering at the University of Michigan, had an opportunity to work on small satellites um, then in some of the first science funded uh, missions, which was um, okay. pretty revolutionary in like the 2010 era, so about 10 years ago. And then after that, I got to work at JPL, a NASA center in Southern California for about three years, which was an amazing opportunity. And then at Google X um, and worked on drones and satellites there. And then we started Swarm about four and a half years ago. Uh, the goal when we started Swarm was really to solve for global affordable connectivity. Mm -hmm. um, and we are making great strides towards that mission. It's still the mission today. And we do that, um, as you know, Rachel, with really tiny satellites. And right now we have um, a constellation that provides global coverage. You know, every point on earth gets covered dozens of times a day. Um, and we have customers actually on the network on every continent, uh, moving small amounts of really valuable data at a really low price point. Um, and we're really excited to get our full network up this year, continuing to onboard customers and to scale up commercially. Yeah. Um, so as you were in the kind of the beginning of small sets, um, when you were thinking to start your own company, out of all the different applications of what you can do in space, why were you drawn to IoT connectivity? Yeah, I wish I could say that it was strategic. Um, I think it was more, we had this idea around a really tiny satellite. Um, and as we as we started to figure out what it could do and, and the data rates that it could support, um, even just to bring back, you know, if we were doing imaging or any other type of space application, you mm -hmm. obviously need to always bring that data back. And when we did the calculations, the link budget to figure out what type of data rates we could support, we actually quickly realized that we could do data rates um, in the kind of one to five kilobits per second, which are comparable to what many of the legacy SATCOM, low earth orbit providers like Orbcom and Iridium mm -hmm. and Global Star provide today. Um, so we recognized an opportunity to go after those existing established markets um, and do it at a really interesting price point because of course our satellites are several orders of magnitude. So something like a thousand or 10,000 times smaller than those satellites. Right. And therefore the capital requirements would be significantly lower. In fact, way less than our series A which that's the first time that's ever happened mm -hmm. um, and minimizing probability of bankruptcy, which is also a pretty common trend in uh, SATCOM yeah. um, constellations, as you know. Interesting. Um, okay. So for people who might not be familiar, what is the price point? Yeah. So it's, it's really simple. It's $5 per device per month. So we like to joke that it's less than a Netflix subscription. 
Yeah. And <laughs> what that gets you is about a message an hour on our network. And we find that a lot of our applications are in the um, IoT and M2M, which are just kind of buzzwords for connecting assets. So mm -hmm. it could be an agriculture, like a moisture sensor and logistics, tracking a truck in maritime, um, tracking a weather buoy that's going across the ocean in the energy space, uh, bringing back data from a solar um, a solar or wind farm or an oil and gas sensor or an electricity um, type of electricity monitoring type of system. Uh, there's a lot of USG applications as well. Um, and we can also track people and, and bring back messages from wherever they might be. So in that space, um, you're able to send, you know, about an es a message an hour. That's really okay. kind of valuable in a sweet spot, I would say, in, mm -hmm. in what people are trying to do with it. Um, and that $5 is, it's really exciting because satellite players are typically about 20x more than that. Yeah. So we have this cool ROI calculator, swarm.space slash ROI, where you can compare what you've been paying to what it would be with Swarm. And it's often like 95% savings. So it's it's a pretty impressive chunk of cash you can save um, by switching to Swarm. Yeah, so is it just because you are making the satellites so much smaller? How are you able to get that price point so low? Yeah, so it's mainly driven by the launch economics. So um, as this community knows, launch scales directly with mass and volume of the satellite. So if you launch a 3U satellite, that's somewhere between you know, two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars, and our satellites are quarter use, so they're one twelfth the size of a three U. So if you do that wow. math, it's like twenty k to launch a satellite, okay. um, and plus the cost of the satellite, which you know we don't really talk about that, yeah. but it, it's not millions of dollars. Um, and because we're able to put up this entire network for you know low millions, unit millions of dollars, plus mm -hmm. all of the people and all of that. Um, you're able to, we're able to offer this really attractive price point while still having a really great business, great margins and uh, makes investors happy as well on kind of the revenue and margin side of things. So it's just kind of this magical sweet spot <laughs> that we figured out how to make a satellite that small that could still provide a super useful service. Um, and, you know, it, it works out, the business works out and it's, it's a very interesting, it actually looks more like a software business than a traditional Hardware or, or satellite business. What do you mean by that? So in the software space, um, I mean, if you think of Google and um, Salesforce and, and many of the, the SaaS companies, software as a service companies we know, they're great businesses because they build a product, piece of software, a bunch of engineers build it, probably they're expensive, but it's kind of a one-time cost. Mm -hmm. And then they're essentially copying and pasting or renting out access to that uh, software millions and millions of times over and over every company buys Salesforce and there's not really a new, you know, a new widget doesn't need to be built or a new satellite doesn't need to be built. Mm -hmm. They're able to replicate that. So it's, it's kind of an unfair advantage, right? <laughs> As a business, you have this like incredible ability to just copy and paste your offering with very, very limited overhead. Um, and, and Swarm is like that because we put up this network, we put up this fantastic infrastructure and then many, many millions of devices can access mm -hmm. that infrastructure without every new person joining the network having any sort of like cost to us because the infrastructure mm -hmm. has already been right. up there. And it's kind of the copy paste um, effect. And in the software as a okay. service business, the gross margins tend to be in the like 70% plus um, and, and Swarm is in there and, and much higher than that actually, um, which is not common for hardware companies and satellite companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought on what I was going to ask you on that. No um, interesting. Um, so what, talk to me about how it works for the customer, like what the customer experience is with Swarm. Sure, absolutely. So you can go to our website, swarm.space, and we have a, a slash products page today. And you can check out our products. We currently sell a satellite modem. Um, which is the small uh, device that's about one inch by two inches that customers purchase and can embed within their third-party products. And then we're also coming out with an evaluation kit in the, in the next few weeks, actually, we're going to start selling that on our website. So kind of one click buy and customers can start testing on the network, which will be very exciting. Okay. And then there'll be additional products that we sell online as well. So for now, um, typically we, we, encourage people to click the contact us or email us at info at swarm.space 
and we can get you in touch with a, a representative that can tell you more about the network. Customers are usually pretty technical, so right, they're engineers yeah. or um, software people at their company, so they often want to talk to one of our engineers or me or Ben and really get to understand the technology, its advantages, its limitations, um, and have that conversation. And then we, within a day or two, send them an eval kit so they can start testing on the network. And then they typically start integrating that tile into their device, and then they move forward with the purchase. And we'll be streamlining this all, doing it all online. We really love the Amazon model where you can, you know, click one click buy whenever you want to buy stuff online. So we'll be transitioning to that, which again is pretty uncommon for satellite. Typically it's pretty difficult to buy through resellers and things like that. If if you've ever tried to buy from Iridium, you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) So um, really trying to... um, you know, bring some innovation to the the sales process and make it really easy for small, mid-sized companies, but also enterprise to to purchase satellite solutions. Okay, that's interesting. Um, you mentioned additional products. Does that mean you'll be launching, like, say, vertical specific products? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, of course, we are across a lot of different verticals, and there's quite a bit of demand across. You know, all the verticals I mentioned: agriculture, logistics, energy, yeah. maritime, etc. We find, though, that um, there's probably a set of products that are pretty vertical agnostic. Um, Mm -hmm. The obvious one would be like a tracker where you can send a GPS location that's useful in logistics and in maritime and and maybe even in like the ag tech asset tracking space if you're tracking Mm -hmm. a tractor or something like that. So most likely we'll start with the more vertical agnostic products just because it's more broadly applicable to all of those verticals. Um, And then... A lot of our partners are actually starting to develop vertical specific products um, okay. that we can, we're going to, you can contact us if you want to hear about them, but um, some are more in the egg space, some are more in the energy space, some in the water monitoring space. So we also really like to refer customers that come inbound to customers that can sell them existing swarm products to kind of build this ecosystem and make it easier for everyone. What do you, what do you mean by that? Who are you referring to who? Yeah, so we have, so for example, one company we work with, LayerX, has this great um, modem module. Um, it's actually their sister company called ModuSense. So it's it's a gateway solution that um, companies in the, in the agriculture space may want to purchase and connect it to their sensors. Ah, uh, okay. So if someone comes inbound and they're like, hi, do you have any sort of agriculture gateway systems. We typically say, no, we don't sell that. However, would love to introduce you to Bruce at ModuSense and he can hook you up with purchasing that product. Um, So we like to connect potential customers with other customers that are producing products so that, Mm -hmm. you know, that strengthens the whole ecosystem and more people are able to get on Swarm. And so then if they buy the module from that company, it's going to be connected through the Swarm network. Exactly, yeah. And the our partner, ModuSense, bought the tiles from us. So it's also a sale for Swarm. Okay, interesting. Um, so I know that your network went live earlier this year. Um, I think it was in the winter. So how has that how has that gone over the past few months? And what type of response have you gotten from customers? Um, what's that experience been like? Yeah, totally. So I think, you know, we announced that it was commercially live, like you said, in, in the winter. But for any network, it's really a slow growth, right? You put up a few satellites and then a few more, and um, you learn and iterate and improve the software and firmware as as time progresses. Um, So it it was more of a gradual thing for us than like an immediate thing in terms Mm -hmm. of going live. Um, Having commercial customers on the network is, it's very exciting, to be honest. I think it's awesome to hear about use cases. It's amazing to hear that people are in Switzerland or Africa or Brazil or Canada or, you know, the middle of the ocean and testing swarm and everyone is having a really positive um, experience. You know, people will report back that they got hundred percent of their messages through or their latency was seconds or minutes. And um, it, I think the performance often exceeds what we would even expect. <laughs> so that's always really encouraging. Um, We'll have people turn on their devices inside, which, you know, typically for satellite, you want to be outside and have Mm -hmm. line of sight to the sky, but still sometimes works inside. (laughs) So there are some fun stories of I was downtown San Francisco in my apartment and it worked. (laughs) Um, um, And it's also just 
really interesting to hear about the use case as I was talking to yeah. a, a company this morning that's monitoring for um, kind of illegal logging. Um, there's a lot of fire detection. There's a lot of air and water quality monitoring. A lot of really good for the world, climate change, environmental focused companies mm -hmm. that are using Swarm. So I, I always love, you know, you know, supporting those companies. It's indirect, but um, it's truly infrastructure that enables them to be successful. Um, and often they, they yeah. come to rely on Swarm because they're starting out or they're nonprofits and they, they need this low cost option. So I find that really inspiring. Um, and you also, you know, learn as you go and you're always improving the algorithms, the satellite technologies, where we put ground stations, putting up more satellites. And that always just improves the performance and mm -hmm. customers like that as well, because the service is always getting better. Yeah. Um, we spoke earlier in the year and I remember you had said that with that low price point, it can unlock use cases for people who wouldn't be able to afford satellite connectivity otherwise. And I think that that's a really exciting aspect of the Swarm network. Absolutely. That's that's probably the most exciting for me is hearing companies that either couldn't connect devices um, if they were in, in remote locations um, or were only able to do cellular. So they were kind of constrained in terms of where they could operate now right. expanding beyond that reach. So um, that's, yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you remembered that. That was like probably the key takeaway. <laughs> so you said that you have customers on all seven continents. Um, where would you say you're seeing the most demand? Um, and what's that like globally? Yeah. So probably the most demand is actually out of New Zealand and Australia. Oh, wow. Um, there's tons of interest there. I think that there is um, large swaths of land that lack cellular coverage. Okay. Um, and then there's also a lot of relevant industries. So in the agriculture and logistics and maritime spaces, there's a lot of deployed assets. And then I think the New Zealand and Australian um, folks are very tech forward and they're very innovative and they're very, they adopt technology really quickly. So they've been very open-minded when it comes to trialing and then deploying Swarm. Um, outside of that, I would say a lot of interest in Brazil. We actually have three customers oh, that are wow. signing up right now in Brazil, which has been really fun to see. Very large volumes as well, tens of thousands of devices. Um, and then certainly through the U.S., Canada, Europe, um, interest in Mexico, um, and then definitely interest in Africa. That's been a little bit slower to, mm -hmm. to roll out. Yeah, that's interesting that you said New Zealand and Australia. I'm glad I asked that question because I wouldn't have – I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah, yeah, it's been incredible. I think our first seven deals were in New Zealand and maybe one in Australia. Um, and we, we love working with people from New Zealand. They're very friendly and accommodating. And um, it's it's been really easy to work with them and get them on board. Awesome. And Swarm is based in the US, right? Correct, yeah, we're in the Bay Area. Okay. And you mentioned that the network is constantly um, improving. You're constantly working to make it better. Um, so what can we expect to see from Swarm over the rest of 2021? And what are you still working on? Yeah, so the rest of 2021 will be very focused on, I believe we have three or four more launches, including the one today. Okay. So filling in that network. Um, and we need, we're, we're missing a few orbital planes we want this eventual constellation to look like um, an orange that's been sliced into perfect wedges. And we don't have all of the wedges yet. There's a few missing. Okay. Um, and then we're also spreading out the satellites within orbital planes, kind of like a string of pearls. So we're waiting for some of that spread to happen until we have this global coverage. Um, so that will happen very naturally, you know, throughout these next few launches. Uh, we are also working to continuously expand our ground station network. So we're actually mm -hmm. sending ground stations to Australia over the next few weeks and then several other places, a lot of random islands um, in the middle of various oceans so that we get nice um, longitudinal and, and also, also um, latitude spread on those. And that will improve the latency of the network. So if you're in the middle of the okay. ocean, be able to downlink data faster. Uh, we are also working on uh, some integrated products that we'll be releasing. So we'll first be releasing our eval kit online, one click buy in a few weeks. That'll be a big announcement. So anyone can buy Swarm at that point okay. and anyone can do messaging and GPS tracking with that device. So you could put it 
on your camper if you go out okay. um, yeah. camping or if you have a cottage that doesn't have connectivity like my parents in Canada, you'll be able to send text messages through that device, which is kind of a fun application. Yeah, that's that's very exciting. Yeah, and then releasing some additional integrated products later in the year uh, that will be more for the industrial and, and eventually commercial space. Um, we'll be continuing to grow our team. So we're about 30 people today, hoping okay. to grow to maybe 45 by the end of the year if we can, if we can get there. Um, so always looking for top talent to come join us. Um, I think those are the key things. Um, some other exciting stuff on the enterprise and, and the government uh, side as well. Um, but that's uh, a little bit more under wraps right now. Gotcha. Well, it sounds like there's a lot going on. Broadly speaking, what would you say are some of the trends that you're expecting in the satellite IoT space over the next few years? And how do you expect this ecosystem to evolve? Yeah, that's a great question. I think there's a lot of satellite IoT players right now. And I think that we're going to see some consolidation um, and or some of the players will probably start to resell other satellite providers. We're mm -hmm. actually already seeing that with some of the providers. Um, it probably doesn't make sense for 15 companies to each launch a constellation of yeah. 100 or 200 satellites. So I'm seeing some of them pivot to perhaps just doing the ground side of things or just doing a backhaul capability on the space side of things. So I think we're going to see that. I think we're going to also see more um, use of edge compute and AI. So trying to make sense of data um, at the farm or at the kind of edge of the network hmm. before the data is relayed back to the internet. Okay. So one example we've seen is in New Zealand, there's this great use case where there's a camera that takes photos of a trap to see whether or not um, an invasive species has been trapped. And then it does some calculations, some probably some ML, AI, mm -hmm. and figures out whether or not there's an animal. And then only a small amount of really valuable data can be sent, even over the swarm mm -hmm. network, right? It doesn't need to be a broadband type network. So I think we're gonna see more use of that in order to assess maybe some crop data or some imaging data or sound data so that the amount of data that needs to be sent back can be compressed to very, very tiny mm -hmm. um, and relayed through the a network like Swarm for very low cost. So I think we're going to see more development of that kind of edge compute. Interesting. Well, I'll get ready to close this out because I know that you have a launch to go watch. <laughs> but we like to close these out asking for a recommendation of maybe a movie or a show, a podcast, an album that you've been watching or listening to lately. Um, so any shows or movies that you'd like to pitch for? I don't have much time to watch shows or movies. I am watching The Crown finally. Okay. Um, and that's pretty good. Can I, can I do a book? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So my favorite book, which I read around the beginning of COVID was Why We Sleep. And it's by a sleep researcher and it's very academic, but also has like fun anecdotes. And that actually really changed how I try to approach my sleep habits and has really helped me with energy. So I would recommend. Yeah, so so you'd say that's a book that you read a, a, like more than a year ago and it's still affecting yes, what you yes. do now. Yeah. And I think we should all read it because I think we should all value sleep like way more than we do, especially as busy, busy professionals. So that would be my top recommendation. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, Sarah, thank you so much. Thanks for coming on. Congratulations to Swarm for being named one of the 10 hottest companies by Via Satellite and good luck with the launch this afternoon. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Bye for now, Rachel. Bye. See ya.